Yes. Welcome back to the course Project Management Fundamentals. Today's topic is end of project transition. There are four possible scenarios for what happens at the end of the project. One is project termination and this includes the handoff of the project to the community. Termination is from the standpoint of the implementing organization. They're no longer managing the project. It may continue, but in the hands of the local community. Extension means there's a time extension to continue the project. Redesign means the structure of the project is going to be changed and the project will continue under the new structure. And an expansion is broadening the scope of the project to perhaps include more people, more communities, etc. The components of the end of project transition include planning, and planning for the end should begin from the beginning. The transition should be planned in the early stages of the project. Partnerships are important. In particular, who will the members of the local community be that are going to ensure the continued operation of the project once the NGO is no longer involved. Capacity building relates to these same individuals. What training are they going to need to successfully continue the project? What resources will be needed? In particular, what funds are necessary and where will they come from to be able to continue the project? Is there an option for a staggered phase out? This is the idea of gradually ending the project, gradually transitioning the project to the local community so they don't take over all at once but there's a gradual phase out of the implementing organization and phase in of responsibility on the part of the local community. And finally, evolving roles and responsibilities means that instead of the members of the implementing organization having the primary roles in the project, they're now going to transition into advisory and, and assistant roles with more responsibility moving into the hands of the local community. At the end of the project, there should be a stakeholder meeting. This is giving the donors and the local community the opportunity for verification that the scope has been accomplished. So, for example, if a project scope was operate in three communities, that in fact the project did occur in three communities. Also, verification that deliverables have been accepted, that the donor accepts the final result, that the community accepts the project as it stands now and is committed to continuing the project and ensuring satisfaction for the donors and the community not just with the technical aspects how the project was carried out but also the overall outcomes the results and the sense that the community is better off and from the donor standpoint that the funds were well invested and made a meaningful improvement in the community there are closure components relating to administration, finance, and contracts. Administrative closure relates to personnel that are on the project being reassigned, assets being assigned to other projects or being disposed of, and any important reports being completed and delivered to the donor as well as perhaps the organization who carried out the project. Financial closure means making sure all donations have been received. If there are any excess donations, they should be returned. And the settlement of receivables due to the project as well as payables due from the project. And finally, contractual closure. And finally, contractual closure. Any parties involved in contracts such as suppliers, contractors, the implementing organization itself, have all contractual obligations been fulfilled and are all contracts closed? And again, does the donor accept the deliverables? Does the donor in writing say that we understand the project has come to an end and we accept the project and the deliverables as they are? Another activity at the end of the project is to capture lessons learned. And this has two benefits. One is for the implementing organization. They can develop a set of best practices based on lessons learned from individual projects. This learning accumulates over time. And for the NGO sector, the broader NGO sector, not just the implementing organization, but for others that could benefit from these lessons. Evaluation reports on the results of the project, as well as databases relating to information from the project 
can be valuable to other organizations. And one helpful tool to assist in the process of capturing lessons learned is the after action review. This is a meeting with the members of the implementing organization to answer five questions. First, what did we set out to do? What was our original plan? What were our original desired outcomes? Two, what did we achieve? What are the actual outcomes of the project? Three, what went really well? What happened in the project that was exactly as planned or maybe even exceeded expectations? Fourth, what could have gone better? What didn't go as planned? It's important to acknowledge those areas of the project results. And finally, what can we learn from this project? So the idea, again, of lessons learned is what went well, what didn't go well, what the actual outcomes were in relation to the anticipated outcomes at the beginning of the project all contribute to organizational learning and improve project management in future activities. And finally, the end of the project means it's time for celebration, which is recognizing team members who participated in the project implementation, recognizing the stakeholders, both the donors who made a financial contribution, as well as the local community who participated in is the reason for the project, and this is also an opportunity to express appreciation for people who maybe went above and beyond, made a special contribution, were important in helping to realize the outcomes of the project. This concludes the lecture end of project transition. As always, when we meet in class, we'll continue to work through our project.